PowerShell error handling. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and one of the things that really sets apart a good script from a great script is the script's ability to respond to errors that you can anticipate ahead of time. It's called error handling. I'll give you a little crash course about how it works. If the goal of error handling is to anticipate errors and then deal with them as they occur, rather than just allowing PowerShell to explode, then when you look at a script like this one, you're gonna to have to spend a little time figuring out where you think the errors might occur. Now, because this is a short one, I, I think it's reasonably safe to say that errors are gonna happen on one of these two lines if they happen anywhere. I mean, these are really the only two lines that are doing anything, and some of the errors that we could anticipate are the computer not being available when we try to query it, uh, could be that we don't have permission to query it, so there's several things that could go wrong. Here's how to properly deal with that. First of all, choose one command, typically one command. You can do a block of commands, but the way I'm gonna show you works a little bit better if you do it one command, and wrap it in a try catch block. Being very careful to indent once I'm inside of that block. So the command that you think might cause an error goes in the try, and then in the catch, we're gonna put whatever we wanna do about it if an error occurs. Most PowerShell commands are gonna need a little bit of extra work to make that happen though. You're gonna to have to add a parameter called error action and set it to stop. Sometimes you'll see that abbreviated as just EA. Now it's possible you might wanna take a different action based on the type of error that occurs and so you can capture the error in an error variable. I'm just gonna call it, well, let's just call it X. Sometimes you'll see that abbreviated EV. It's important to note that the variable name here does not include a dollar sign. So what do we wanna do about it when an error occurs? Uh, well, let's say we want to write the computer name that failed to a log file. So we'll take the computer name variable, pump it to a file, and append it to whatever else is in there. Uh, maybe we wanna display a warning on the screen. See, by using double quotation marks, oops, there we go, I can include these variables and they'll be expanded into their values. Now, sometimes you also have to think about a little logic. Look, if, if this computer does not respond to this query, then it's probably not gonna respond to this one either, and there's no point in creating all of this output. So here's the next little trick I'll often throw in. I'll create a variable and set it to true because I'm a kind of glasses half full guy. I'm gonna assume everything worked okay. If I get an error, I'll set that to false. And then I'll only do the rest of the script if that variable remained true. So if this fails, these lines will execute and none of this will ever execute. I mean, after all, if this query failed, there's no point wasting time trying that one. It's probably gonna fail too. So let's save that, give it a little whirl and test it out. Good, it worked with localhost. Now it's important to test both sides of the equation. So let's put in a server that definitely doesn't exist. I did this demonstration one time and there was a computer on the network called not online and the script worked. I was quite surprised. So let's run it. Now we're just experiencing the timeout while WMI figures out that it didn't work. So here's our warning. We got an error talking to not online. Here's the error that happened. Um, the RPC server is unavailable. Let's take a look at that errors file. And it logged the computer name to that file. So that's fantastic. The real trick with this is this error action. That tells the command, look, if a problem happens, rather than just keeping going and, and trying to continue, I want you to stop and throw a complete exception, a trappable exception, and that's what this is actually trapping. Without the EA stop, none of this would work. In fact, just to prove it, I'm gonna take that out. We'll save this. You get a little bit different behavior this time. I'm still leaving it as the computer name that's not reachable. 
So we're waiting for WMI to time out. This time we got an error directly from the command. It wasn't our warning. It's, it's a full on error. And the second WMI command tried to run, which is why we got a second error. And then our output is all gibberish. So that kind of demonstrates that the error action stop is really the key to making error handling work in PowerShell. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.